Hey, Press for Truth. Um, good on you. Hang in there. I I hope YouTube doesn't uh, follow suit with this um, corruption trend sweeping the internet. I can't believe that your site was suspended, uh, was uh, canceled. How how blatantly audacious! It's unbelievable. I, I mean. The, the number of ways that you could supposedly sue, um, it's so unconstitutional. I, it seems that um, they really are capitalizing on the fact that people don't have enough time and don't are not exposed to enough of the outrageous things that they're doing so to the point where they, can, they know they can get away with stuff. Oh shit, the microphone was behind. Let me see, anyways. Um, I'm just gonna just to add to what you said. I'm gonna uh, tell you about uh, my experience, so that we uh, add. There's this is so multi-dimensional, um, and it's 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 complex and it's got deeper levels. There's just so many places uh, to go at the problems that uh, Facebook is making evident in the power of instant messaging and internet and uh, grabbing so many people um, and making pe so many uh, making the masses vulnerable in um, in their um, just just so many levels I don't even know where to start so I'm just going to tell you the story of the Malvinas Falkland um, Islands dispute um, 30 years ago um, 30 years ago um, about seven or six years ago, it was the thirtieth anniversary of of the end of that war, and so the Argentinians and the British um, opened like a sleuth of um, of groups, and uh, they started um, arguing. It, they were supposed to be debate groups, uh, a place to debate, and you know. Uh, I suppose the common consensus naturally should have been to resolve the tensions, to bring a solution perhaps, to debate matters, and that's what everybody, I'm sure, regardless of the titles of the groups, they were like, maybe it started off with four or five, and now there's ten, of course, there's only uh, three or four that are active, or five that are active, and then there's a bunch of them, that, like twenty of them, that really never took off, but the point is that there's a clique of people um, it's reached the maximum amount of people at least in Argentina probably uh, I'm sure there's still um, room for new people to come from Britain and um, you know the United Kingdom or maybe the Commonwealth but um, it's pretty much reached a, a cap of, of, of anybody who will be interested in participating on the internet on this subject and so what you see are pretty much the same. There's some new people, like I said, especially from the English-speaking so side. But pretty much it's the same clique that has populated these groups. And some of us, like me, have been there for six years, and we know each other. Uh, we've been following each other um, and, and know each other as virtual characters um, through Facebook. And so uh, I learned a lot of uh, of some of the dynamics that happens uh, with this type of technology. For one thing, what as uh, as uh, as I'm bicultural, I was I've raised in both California and Argentina, so I um, I understand the heart and the sentiment behind what people mean when they. Uh, want to express themselves in the language in both languages and, and both uh, you know I can understand where both cultures are coming from when they speak so that gave me kind of a, an a observation deck on, 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 the, on what was happening in these groups and one of the things I, um, I noticed was that the, the Argentinians were really uh, you know they're the underdog they're the ones that, that can't be heard about this conflict and they're argument because they don't have the military power, they don't have the money, they don't uh, dominate uh, the communications uh, medias of the world with their language. So they come in really wanting to talk and make their point. And you know, they have, they have a pretty interesting point. It's not super strong, but they, 
the uh, very uh, feebly were present on the islands when the British had kind of turned their backs on it and when they saw the Spanish weren't interested anymore uh, and the Argentinians were left uh, following on the Spanish there on the islands by themselves, they decided they were going to now um, be able to claim the islands because before the problem was that they were headbutting with Spain, but now that Spain was gone and they could easily just kick the Argentinians off the islands um, after their wars of independence and they, they just took the islands. And so the, since then the Argentinians are protesting because of course they took him by force and they don't want to admit it, they want to say that they were only British, always British, and that's the beginning of the lie because they weren't always British. They were uh, being contested by Spain and, and Britain. So anyways, and so nobody hears the argument and the English can prevail in their version because they dominate the, 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 the medias of the world. And so in their own interest, and even Americans, you know, what we hear is the is the English version, and so immediately it's more appealing, it makes more sense, we, we would have to go out of our way to understand what the Argentinians don't know that is not being said, and so, you know, it's like they're drowning in, <laughs> and they can't make themselves be heard, and I was seeing the situation, and I was seeing how Argentinians were really trying to be, um, amicable and civilized in these groups and um, basically the British were using sort of a, 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 a belligerent strategy of, of, of harassing and, and making everybody angry and then Argentinians would also and they would insult each other and uh, but the, what I would notice was that what was really unfair and I wrote to Facebook a bunch of times on this was that because English dominates Facebook, the English side of, of, the, of these groups were savvier about utilizing the reporting system and they could, uh, they could trick, they could trip the Argentinians. They could just make them get angry and as soon as they said something with a, a word that had, was sex, sexual, or maybe could constitute harassment, they tried to um, and so they learned, uh, they learned how, to, how to use these systems against the Argentinians. And the Argentinians, you know, they didn't invent the Internet. The, this is all technology that comes from, from the Northern Hemisphere. And perhaps they're very good at programming now and what, what have you. But um, still, the, it's sort of like the, they don't feel they own the, in the, the syst these systems. And so... Um, what was happening is that basically the English systematically started turning the groups instead of because they don't want to argue, they don't do not want to debate, they don't want to talk, bring up history because really in the moral sense the English have a good uh, official storyline because they have a lot of docu documentation and there's a lot of pompous uh, events in history that they can they can uh, adorn the whole uh, their version with while the Argentinians really uh, have to resort to letters that were sent between family members and kind of like a, a wanna be almost uh, almost uh, um, uh, um, consolidated government in Buenos Aires would send a governor but they had to work with with pirateers Americans and British and Irish to to sail and so they have this different um, if you actually analyze what we're talking about is an independent republic actually having more right to islands that are right in front of their shores while the British just wanted to to use these islands for functionally as a outpost as a colonial uh, geopolitical strategical you know base with future considerations and so you could make different types of arguments if both um, sides would be speaking English, but because the Argentinians are hampered in, in, in being able to, you know, present more comfortably uh, uh, different levels of argument, the British basically had a field day, you know, they would, they would mock them and they would just tick them off by using graphics and, and, um, and then I started noticing that it seemed that you know, slowly over the years, I've got suspended like 10 times in the last three years and, and sometimes before that even. Um, the 
Again, what I would notice is that they uh, people uh, that there was a lot of us. Uh, I don't like argue on the Argentinian side. We got together outside Facebook, like on other social networks, and noticed that some of us were being regularly suspended, like on end. Like as soon as one suspension was over, the other one followed, and the other one followed. And I just thought, you know, like three times in a row. Right now, for example, I'm suspended two times in a row, and it's only because of these groups. I don't get <laughs> harassed in any other activity on Facebook. It's only in these groups. And so you know that there's a systematic and intelligence, uh, intelligent use of, uh, of Facebook uh, that is really militant. It's, it's like using uh, a communication area, um, this communication instrument as a, as a war instrument. Um, on, uh, in a cause that is about the real world. It's not about social uh, connectivity and social communication. It's really about the, their, um, their desire to, to shut up the Argentinians about this real conflict. And so th it seems apparent that their, their mindset is that of using Facebook to actually win the, 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 the conflict, not to use the instrument in order to debate and discuss and um, and it is a lot a lot of the reason for that is that on the British side m half of them at least are of military background some are ex-soldiers or people that are in the military or they they have served and so they have a sort of uh, win don't let them see you doubt just kill 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 kind of no sociability just uh, you know once they pick on you especially once they identify you like they did me, there's you become like an item that they they mock and they you know they even made a site, um, they made a group about me just to mock me, and you know the Argentinians uh, and they you know with makeup uh, put on my face and you know slurs about me and they slam call me a pedophile and all this stuff, and um, it's. It's just to create an atmosphere of negativity against anything that is related to the Argentinian argument for the islands. Anything, anybody that stands up and says, you know, but wait a second, let's l hear out the Argentinians, immediately gets shot down with a cannonball. You know, uh, so it's almost like a systematic thing. And, um, and then I started noticing that, that it, um, when I would report Facebook and say, no, this is a mistake, I actually did not insult anybody, they just took that word and somehow that qualified for sexual harassment, but it wasn't. If you actually look at the groups, you'll see that everybody's insulting each other 24-7, and now I was isolated to be suspended. It's obvious that they're using your reporting system as a, 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 a tool to harm people, and and I wrote extensive letters to Facebook, like saying, you know, these people think it's a game to try to win this uh, real international conflict through, you know, uh, attacking people on Facebook. But what they don't realize is that I, for example, and all the other people, the Argentines, they have been doing this too. You know, we have real lives. I, for example, um, I travel a lot and. Um, I have friends I don't see for years, and it seems that my life really uh, follows me. I'm able to follow my, my past acquaintances thanks to Facebook because I'm in a different country now, different to where I was. And, and so I follow. It's very emotional. It's very, it's very psychological, psychologically da damaging. Aside from the studies that they're doing and everything, there's an aspect that is consequential to the callous viciousness in which members can use Facebook and Facebook makes these system, these reporting systems available to them um, because all of a sudden you know like for example I have a group where that helps me out I'm almost indigent and I um, I have a dog and she's old and there's a you know I don't I, 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 I'm petrified that I will have a huge vet bill one day uh, now that she's getting old and I won't be able to pay for it. And so uh, luckily there's animal uh, rights people and groups in, in places I go to and you always find them and they have their groups and now I have a group 
here in in uh, in Italy where I am. And if if uh, suddenly my dog needs an operation, I know these people will chip in and they'll help me out. And so we're talking about health issues. We're talking about maybe uh, having work connections, uh, having you know uh, uh, livability, uh, sustainability aspects where, where your work is seen by people and then they call you for something you know they just really attack your life when they suspend you and I wrote to Facebook about this and they just ignore me it, moreover when I um, they responded to my they seemingly responded to my reports by adding another report which almost sound looked like by what the, the sentence that was selected it almost looked like they were trying to communicate with me like one of those sci-fi movies where aliens communicate with you by moving the sand on the glass or something they were sort of responding to my my long dissertations uh, you know and uh, the for example on the um, injustice of one when it comes to, um, well, I'm going to explain that in a bit, um, and they would answer back by sending me, this too was reported, and it almost sem se looked like it was saying, fuck you to me, because it supposedly they have, and I never wrote something with, with fuck you on it, but um, you know, maybe I did years ago, I don't know, but so they would go, or the people who report me would go to the, to uh, past records like maybe a, a couple of years ago and find something with which to report me on so there's something really organized and and weird going on and it stands to reason because i've uh, already visited other like british american just groups about politics and international affairs and other places and when i talk to the general public I can see already that the English over the last 20 years have succeeded in educating the English-speaking population to uh, see the Falkland Malvinas dispute about the Falkland Islanders' right to self-determination and the War of 82, and they just gave it, and, um, and it stops there. They know nothing about 1833 or when the Argentinians were kicked or that Spain had the islands and that the British left and preferred not to fight for the islands and, and, and let the Spanish continue to rule them and, you know, details that would start making people, well, that means that maybe the Argentinians have uh, uh, a point here. Maybe they have a, a cause. And uh, they want to they erase all that and they just want to tell this story. And you see it. You see how, like, if I bring up the subject in an American politics group, um, you see that uh, they immediately take the same rhetoric, almost like l to the to the letter, the same spiel that the English fight against the Argentinians uh, with in these groups. And so communication and, and what you educate people to believe about international uh, is, uh, uh, matters is really sensitive when it comes to social networks the size of Facebook because people uh, oh yeah and um, what I one of the things I pointed out to Facebook was that it's all very well and 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 fine when it comes to uh, you know showing what plates you're having wherever you're traveling and look at the little puppy and look at what I'm wearing and this is my girlfriend and what have you uh, but when groups become about um, important social matters, social causes, or passionate patriotic disputes of, of territorial sovereignty between two countries, then it, it takes the, the heart and the passion of people that participate to a whole other level. I mean, there's, there's hate in these groups. There's these, you know, the, 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 Isle, the Falkland Islanders, for example, have been completely convinced that the Argentinians are invasive uh, you know, bastards, and they, they, they hate, they resentful, they're scorned, they want, they keep re, rehashing the War of 82, and if you look at it from the Argentinian side, um, 
actually the Argentinians never ever dreamed of using military or hating uh, for to solve the dispute or hating the islanders that was just a weird thing that the military junta that occupied Argentina in 82 did to save its own ass and they sprung it on the Argentinians the Argentinians were surprised overnight and then of course they you know all of a sudden they, they were chanting the next day because it, these bastards that were murdering and torturing them it turns out that they went and and did good on this old, you know, 150-year-old dispute with England. So, of course, they would cheer. But instead of looking at it objectively for what it, for the real dynamics that defined the, the, the war and the dispute from both sides, they only adhere to the British storyline of it. So, um, when you introduce this to a place where language the language of one of the two sides, especially considering the stronger side, the one that dominates already all uh, communication um, venues in the world, practically, uh, it becomes an uh, uh, an, an, um, an environment of intense injustice, massive injustice, uh, because here you have people that are trying to match up what little they know in English to write in English. Uh, so they can have a, a discourse, a dialogue, a debate on something to try to seek a resolution. And these guys are just laughing it off how they can just loudly insult them and, 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 and um, provoke them and gang up on, you know, they kind of, they have more, the British side is much more synchronized and it's almost like they have the same objective. Where, and so the Argentinians in this, in this context um, become more individualized, like they're not necessarily coordinating or they don't necessarily f have a, a, a joint spirit in their argument. But uh, you can see the British too because they have also um, stereotyped, they're starting to stereotype the Argentinians. You know, the Argentinians before the War of 82 were like friends with the British. The British went and built their railroads and they were sort of pseudo colonizing sort of like they were doing with india and you know the argentines were all proud because they were all oh, we're kind of english aren't we look at us and da, da, da. and uh, they were actually friends and they thought they were cool in their own relative ways to look at each other they thought they were interesting there was no animosity and there was no animosity between the islanders and the argentinians this was one of the problems for the you know the uh, the right wing or Tory or what have you, um, nationalistic British who who didn't care how they got the islands, but they they were theirs, they belonged to them, because there was no way of of an anemifying, making the Argentinians a a, a point of of enmity, of a, a reason to fight them for. There was nothing. The islanders had no reason because the Argentinians were never hostile or aggressive about the dispute. So the war actually created uh, this the kind of the model that we see around the world uh, about Muslim people, you know, or about communists, and you know, it, it all of a sudden it gave them a character, the the invaders of the Falklands or what have you, but now they're, so the the, the war was horrible, it, 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 it turned, um, it, 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 it uh, gave birth in the minds of the, not the war actually, because the war itself, the war itself was so quick. And if immediately after the war, the British had done the right thing, which is, you know, the islands need to be friends with the Argentinians. They're the only, they're the closest landmass, uh, you know, instead the British saw that it was strategically and logistically very useful to have the islanders stay angry at the Argentinians. So the whole storyline of the Argentinians not respecting their rights of self-determination, uh, they're under the queen. They went there to satisfy England. They didn't go there, they, they, they don't want to have a country. They, it's a lie, you know, but they make it sound like, um, they make it sound like they are settlers that want to have their own country kind of territory and their right of self-determination suggests that but in reality the truth of it is that they really just being kept down there for the purposes of Britain 
uh, for the purposes of England to have these islands. But there's this whole like independent, autonomous, you know, the same thing with Gibraltar. They, it's a way of keeping your military base, and and you justify it by putting it on the people, and the people all of a sudden become the the bearers of uh, of their rights to their self determination, democratic, the whole blah 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 blah, you know, thing that that makes it that has everybody. Oh yeah, that's right. Very good. You're so noble. England, wow, you, you really care about people and their self-determination. Meanwhile, what they really want is to use those territories for what they, uh, for what London wants them for, right? So, uh, this, uh, was the only way of main t of creating, uh, strengthening that situation was to turning, if, to turn Argentina into, uh, like an enemy, an, an enemy of Britain, a sort of a, a light enemy, right? And when you participate in the groups, you can see that that is what they're doing. They, they're they full of prejudiced, uh, stereotypical hostility. And, um, you know, it's all about bashing anything they say. And, and nothing that the Argentine points that they want to make are worth anything. It's incredible. But what I'm getting at is that it really does seem that because it's a cultural, social, education matter, um, it would not surprise me that if somebody has, if somebody has a friend inside Facebook who works in the report room, you know, and the filtering out reports and suspensions and all that stuff, uh, and just picks up the phone and says, look, uh, you know, we got this guy that keeps, uh, that keeps, harass keeps bothering us and whatever, and actually they, they really hate me because I make I make points in English that the Argentinians cannot articulate as well, and uh, it makes it harder for the English to argue. I, I make moral points. I explain things and, and summarize what uh, how what it actually is, uh, uh, what they're actually doing. For example, um, and so far as in, instead of a uh, instead of, instead of a, a complicated description. Uh, I can say, well, that means that basically, you know, you, you, you robbed candy from a baby when, which is when the, when, when some are like, you know, I make examples that the Argentinians aren't able to make, and so they really see me as a nuisance, and they just want to get me out of the group, because also I, I, I kind of break the ice for Argentinians to be able to stay, and brunt the, the onslaught of their harassment. So they see me as a real, strategically something that really must be eliminated, and it would not surprise me that somebody has a contact in Facebook, and they already know, you know, there's a little click inside one of the offices of Facebook that are aware of, you know, they take like pet, maybe they take pet groups or pet situations that are happening, um, and they adopt them personally, and so maybe just a phone call would say, you know, uh, make sure that this guy gets suspended when I report him, for example, only because the animosity towards the Argentinians regarding the Falkland Malvinas territorial dispute is culturally, has been cult culturally diffused, socially diffused uh, through the media, and so it's, it's an easy, um, it's an easy uh, confrontation game to get into because all the language and uh, the uh, the explicate the the explanations and the depictions of of uh, uh, of why we're right and, and why they're wrong are uh, they are already created. So it's almost like they, they they set the game board up through the media over the last 20 years, and now um, anybody who speaks English and who wants to get in and on it, you know, and just for fun or just to because they they want to win because they feel empathy towards the English culture and English matters and so they may be American and so this whole um, this whole situation social situation happens and this is actually the power of social media because it, it really involves um, manipulating what's what people believe at a social level at a cultural level but um, not through any kind of psychological devious system, but actually just through hammering and hammering uh, a certain kind of uh, a certain kind of 
perspective on matters and then quieting because this is what they do they can easily see the whole pers the whole um, if you look if you analyze the reporting suspension system of Facebook what you notice is that there's no way of ver first of all your friends never know you were suspended you don't know who reported you and you can't get a, a response from Facebook as far as maybe a mistake that was made they give you automat automated responses so there's like a shield in other words if they want to they can just suspend you and you will have to think that it's somebody from the group that suspended you is actually somebody inside Facebook so the suspension reporting system works as a shield to be able to manipulate things that matter things that that w that would matter like political issues uh, um, things that have to do with um, you know uh, political education social causes education on that um, it's happened to me also with um, with an issue that I believe you also brought up uh, you made a video about which is a transgender dysphoria crap you know and, um, they're teaching kids to to say that I think I feel like a girl mommy when, when can I get an operation right and this whole madness insanity that is happening so I'm an activist in this and what I am my activist in is in men having the right to uh, not like homosexuality for their kids or want to not you know uh, endorse it you can have friends and have the best time and have them over to your birthday parties and and celebrate their accomplishments and celebrate their birthday parties and and be one big happy family but you can still believe that it's not the optimal uh, form of life for a man right and that is not allowed to say you can you can uh, be best friends with a cigarette smoker or an alcoholic and say smoking is bad for you alcoholism will kill you but I still love you and hey come on over and meet my girlfriend but you can't do that about homosexuality so that's what I'm an activist for I feel that people who have known homosexuality should have the right to grow in their intelligence and comprehension of why it actually happens to society and say hey you know what I want to back out I want to see who is trying what to maybe develop a part of me that hasn't matured and I want to grow out of it and start liking girls for example more than or being less afraid of girls for example an ex an ex gay guy might say that wants to take a secular route not a, a psychological a scientific route uh, about sociology about psycho self self development self development self worth and self esteem and a whole other way not a religious way and so if a man wants to do that today he can't because uh, the whole well you know stuff that you already know so if you say it I tried already I try to do um, uh, what do you call it um, oh Jesus when you ask people surveys surveys in West Hollywood uh, with the silliest questions to try to make people think uh, and and when you put them up against uh, where they need to answer that they go they hate you they want to kill you like I made if I said for example what is humankind's what organ in the human species best complements the phallus of the male okay there's only one answer to that it is the vagina but I would I would do these kinds of um, um, surveys in West Hollywood and um, they are they all haha I got yeah I want to do a I want to do a survey sure you know come on sit down with us and so then when they when that, while they were reading it huh let me think about it let me think about it and then all of a sudden their face would start changing because they knew they had to say the vagina and they would fight and kick and shout and get out of here you you know you have problems and blah 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 so that's where I so the problem and I see where the activism needs to occur aside from um, Aside from children having the right to have a male and a woman, a woman and a man as parents, and, and not be obligated to be adopted because of the whim of gay couples who want to be parents, and so we're taking, you know, I believe that is a human, natural, innate right that we all have as children. If we can't, for whatever reason, if one of our parents dies and we're raised by our our uncles or what have you, it's completely different. 
to a gay couple deciding they're going to take the, ch the, the right away from an adopted baby who has a, a perfectly uh, op um, a, a perfectly free opportunity to be raised by a mom and a father. So it's almost like I occupy an area. I don't, I don't take sides on yay or nay on that. I believe homosexuality is part of human sexuality and every some people it satisfies them more because it addresses stuff that is happening um, mainly in the in psychology I believe in nurturing but in any case so I'm just explaining so when um, I also again in the groups in these same groups and I think it's because the English culture American English culture have taken to heart as as being represented by this um, across the board non it seems to embody non racism and individual rights and you know to to cheer for gays right and unquestioned unquestioned unconditionally cheer for gays and no no don't think about it we don't want to understand what it's about right so when I would um, say stuff and I really try to use all the tact in the world so that it becomes clear if you look at the writing there's I'm not attacking I'm not separating I'm not condemning if anything I believe it's a social responsibility we should be thinking of our kids you know if it's you're already in it it's kind of hard to just reverse a hundred percent and all of a sudden get into the ladies like mad you know and, and start wanting to screw every girl you see I, 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 I it's not a toggle thing and that's why I think we make a mistake in separating we have created separation in genders. We're just two genders, and on anybody can experience the pleasure of homosexuality. But it not it doesn't really roll so well with everybody the same way. Some people kind of say, "Yeah, I get it. I, it's all, I, there was pleasure in it after all." But you know, I kind of feel now uncomfortable and weird and nauseous or what have you. There's a natural side, a natural aversion in the brain that exists there for a reason. Homophobia is actually. Uh, just a natural feeling like fear of fire you know like a fear of heights or something it's there for a reason so that we survive so that we don't do stupid things and fear of having uh, sex with the same gender is actually a natural uh, occurrence in the brain and uh, they don't want to look at that they all want to forget that half of them were afraid and had trepidations the first time they tried it with a guy you know it's all about endorsing it 100%. So I try to say things, and no matter how tactful I try to make my comments and try to get my little my little two cents of activism out there in the most passive way possible, somehow, somehow, every single time, Facebook has suspended me. But I said it like somewhere else, earlier in the day, in, a, in another group, wouldn't you know that, a oh, boom, suspension. You know, or it's happened like four or five times that I've been suspended because coincidentally I made one of my... And what they really are uh, defend against is when you make simple, sensible, eye-opening, awakening comments that make people possibly think, oh my God, he's right. They're right. Can you believe we were we were so off so wrong statements that have that power are are immediately detected and that's when they want to shut you up so with the suspension reporting system they can encourage the stream it's almost like playing with a, a stream of water all you have to do is let the already occurring masses go by and then block wherever uh, you you want to block so that the result will be and enhanced of what you're it's almost like synthesizing or or uh, distilling distilling the current of communication it's not so much uh, um, how people see it it's done differently it's done anyways I, I'm sure you will appreciate this or sorry it took so long um, and uh, I look forward to seeing your videos uh, continue on and on and on and on peace